new stuff is about logs and we're going to be in that notebook in a second if you haven't already find, found it find it it's under today's date and it says logs on top here's why we need it well don't you just set the bases the same yeah but you can't so this is why we need logs to, to fix this so that i can get x alone like if i had five plus or even five times uh, x equals 25 i would just divide both sides by five here i just subtract five from both sides i can even fix this what do you have to do to get the x alone now square root both sides but that you don't have a way to fix that yet until now and it's logs so logs have to do with exponentials that's why we have the exponentials unit first you just got to be experts at that we just already took the tests on that so now it's about how to get this written as a log log base five and now notice it doesn't just go in order it would seem like the next thing i should write would be the x it's not i jump over here and then I write the answer. That's something that you could, in theory, put in your calculator. But I want to warn you that today we aren't going to be using the calculators. I'm only going to give you ones where they come out nice. All right, just for this one, I'm going to do it for you so you don't need to get out your calculator because literally this is the one that we'll do without it or where you need a calculator and it is log and here's how i'm typing it in by the way log eight divided by log five now you just learned a lot right there 1.29 that means five to the 1.29 is equal to eight do you think if it happened to come out exactly as 1.29? No, I rounded it. That's why when you put in 5 to the power of 1.29, it doesn't exactly give you 8. It gives you like 7.99999. It's like really, really close to 8. All right. So, can you change? If I would have just made that 25, it would be so easy because then they could make the bases the same. Can you change that to a log? Did you learn enough yet to be able to do that? Can you put the cell phone away, please? I know you're not using it right this second, but make sure your cell phones are not on your desk. It would be just too tempting. It would be like me sitting with a brownie next to me. It's going to go away. I would use it. All right, we're going to put this as a log base 5 of 24 equals x. And did anybody catch how I would have put that in the calculator? Which one went in first? 24. So you go log 24 and then what? Divided by log 5. All right. Now, we aren't going to deal with calculators today because we're only going to do ones that are nice. Like, imagine for a moment I had a 25 right there. Think about the ramifications of that. And then think about what you think the answer is. What do you think the answer is? Two. Because I just changed the 24 to a 25, and now look. If I change the 24 to a 25, now it's that. Now if I made the bases the same, it would be 5 to the second, right? And that means if you can make this and this have the same base, it's like making this and this have the same base. They both could have a base of 5. And once they both have the same base, then that just equals that, which means that this could be written as log base 5 of 5 squared, and the bases are the same. So now this equals this all right that got a little intense let's see if you can handle it let's say i said eight to the second equals nope sorry eight to the x 
equals uh, one sixteenth. Would you please, please rewrite that as a log? Log base this of that. Let's pause we try that. Okay, did you realize this was a log base eight? of 1 16th is equal to x. Who wrote it that way? All right, that's most of you. OK, so this is always the base because, look, it's got a power on it. That makes this the base. And if that's the base, it goes down here in the log. This part is called the argument. We could argue about why it's called the argument, uh, but Honestly, there's not a great snappy reason that I can give you. This one is the exponent, and that makes sense, because look at this in the, in the other form of it. It is the exponent. So this is called the exponent position. This is called the argument. We could argue about why. And that one is called the base, and it makes sense. It's on the bottom of everything. All right, so here's how you say this so you don't look like a fool math-wise. This happens all the time. People have an answer and they're supposed to read it to me and they're like, log 2, 8. That doesn't make any sense. You've got to be able to say it right. There's two missing words that you need to help say it. Take a wild guess what the word is that I'm going to say right before I say 2. Base. And then the other word, people usually know that one, but the other one they usually don't know is what word I should say right before I say 8. Log base 2 of... 8. Very good. Log base 2 of 8. And then from there, it's just equals x or equals whatever it equals. Okay. And I can do this one. The answer to it is 3. Does anybody know what I just did? Hint. It has to do with making the bases the same. Three people can do it. Just give it a second. I think more people can figure out why the answer is 3. What do you think I should do to show people that the answer is 3? Replace something with something? Can I replace something with something else? Go ahead, say what you were going to say. Because 2 to the third power, and this is the exponent, right? I like that way of thinking. Good, that works. And you're right, the answer is 3. And 2 to the third is 8. That's right. Another way to think of it is, I could replace this 8 with a uh, 2 to the 3rd, and then it looks like this. Log base 2 of 2 to the 3rd. And then look, if these two are the same, that's the answer. That's like making the bases the same on this kind of a question. Remember these from the last test? And you'd replace the 25 with 5 to the second so that you'd make the bases the same, right? But now the bases are here, and this is the base of the argument. This whole thing, which was an 8, is the argument, but I can make it into a 2 to the third. See if you caught on to the pattern there. Log base 4 of 1 fourth. If you're good at this, you should be able to say, I know the answer to that one. I can do that log in my head. And don't say log 1 fourth divided by log 4. That's true, but you can simplify it and give me the answer. And the answer is like 1 or something like that, but it's not 1. Raise your hand if you think you have it. Ooh, we got a lot of people this time. What do you think? Negative 1 is correct. Tell me why. Because I can rewrite the 1 fourth as a 4 to the... Close. There you go. And that's why the answer is negative 1, because I made the bases the same as the answer. All right, try one more. Log base 1 fourth of 16. Hint, you want to make the 16 into a 1 fourth. Pausing for a second. OK, did you figure out that the 16 could be written as a one-fourth to the, 
I gotta square it to get the four to be 16, but then it's gonna be 1 16th, so it's not really squared. What is it? Negative two. Now that the bases are the same, the answer is negative two. All right, logs. Here's the main stuff that I need you to know. Let's flip over to the uh, file that's posted for today. And it says at the top, I've already taught you most of it, by the way. Do you understand why logs are needed? If you missed that part, I'm going to show it to you again. It's to solve equations that are a certain kind of equation. Okay, next is there is our logs another way to write an exponent? Yep. And I'm going to teach you some terminology. I already have the base, the argument, and the exponent are the three major spots. Those are the terms. And then can you evaluate logs without a calculator? That's what we were just doing a second ago. The ones where it's like you got to make the bases the same. All right, so here is a couple things that you where you use logs in real life. Anytime you have a really big range, imagine a sound so quiet that it is literally a fly scratching its wing with its foot, like a house fly scratching its wing off with its foot. Can you imagine if it was close enough to you, you could actually hear that? A fly scratching its wing with its foot. Really quiet, but I guarantee you, we're almost never in a spot where it's quiet enough to hear that kind of thing because there's always ambient noise. Like right now, there's a fan running right there. There's a fan running over there. And that's one of the weird things that happens when power shuts down is all of a sudden it gets super quiet. Even at your house, like there's a fan running all the time to blow the hot air around your house. So even at your house, it's almost never really quiet. But there are noises that are that quiet, and there are noises that are obviously medium, and then there's noises that are kind of painful to even hear. Anytime it's painful at all, you're doing damage to your hearing. You should not do that. And then you go to this level. There are noises that are so loud that if you heard it, it would blow out your hearing and you'd never hear again. Isn't that insane? I mean, normally we think of noises ramping up and like, and you go, oh, I'm going to cover my ears. But what if it just kind of went off? Like a firecracker right next to your ear can do permanent hearing damage. And then this one blew me away the other day. I actually looked it up. You can have a sound so loud that if you hear it, you die. Isn't that bizarre? You can go deaf from a sound that's loud enough. You can also die from a sound that's loud enough. It just doesn't seem possible, but it is. So do you get there's a huge range there from the sound you can barely hear all the way to a sound that could actually, if you don't believe the dying part, look it up, but uh, the sound that could make you go deaf, I know you know that there's things that will do that, right? Okay, so a big range like that can be shrunk down to a scale of 1 to 10. That's what decibels is. And then there's a big range uh, for earthquakes. Earthquakes, a really, really quiet one you can't even feel, like a 1.9 Earthquake on the Richter scale, 1.9. You could barely, you probably couldn't even feel that one. And then it gets into the twos, you can barely feel them. But here's the part that people are blown away by. If I get like an 8.9 on the Richter scale, that's getting up there. Do you get that if you had a Richter scale that was a 9.9? .9? It's not just one notch bigger. It's 10 times bigger. So that's the reason that a scale of 1 to 10 can actually be a huge, cover a huge range. It's because going from an 8.9 on the Richter scale to a 9.9 on the Richter scale is 10 times bigger. So you can imagine why they say the big one. Our biggest, biggest Richter, uh, Richter scale earthquake is like a 9.6 or something like that. They say the big one would be over 10. Let's say it was a 10.6. What did I just say two seconds ago? How many times bigger is that? 10 times bigger because the base is 10. These are base 10 logs. Okay, So a big earthquake would be literally 10 times, could be 10 times bigger than the biggest earthquake we've ever had. And a really big earthquake would be enough to 
knock me off my feet standing up. Okay, you guys might stay in your chair sitting down. Uh, and it would probably shake this building hard enough that it would probably fall down, like the whole building. Okay, so we're not in an area that's used to earthquakes, but did you know that if you're in an earthquake kind of situation, you're supposed to get out of buildings? People will run out on the streets. So if our first earthquake ever happened in Minnesota, and I shouldn't say ever, did you know that we're on a fault line? It's just an inactive fault line, hasn't gone off for like over 10,000 years. But we're on a fault line, so it's possible. And if we started having an earthquake, you know what you should do? Get out of the building immediately so it doesn't fall down on you. All right, enough of that. How about the pH scale? This one's also kind of cool. It's the scale that tells you how acidic something is. The most acidic thing you've probably ever tried is maybe lemon juice. But a close second would be like diet pop. Very acidic. So acidic, in fact, that if you were to go to the dentist and have a tooth pulled, you know, and you got to, you get this tooth now, and you put it in a glass of Diet Coke, a couple days later it's gone. Because it will literally dissolve because it's that acidic. So I want you to think about that. If you take a little sip of pop, and then an hour later you take another little sip of pop, do you get you like coating your teeth with acid and then it washes off because you got saliva and stuff, but it constantly reintroducing acid into your mouth is obviously gonna work slowly wearing down your teeth because it's acid. It's way up there. It's not as strong as battery acid, of course, but it's up there. All right. And then down here on the other end, nothing good down here. Just to clarify, you wouldn't ever drink any of these things. Seawater is even acidic, and I think you guys probably know you go insane from drinking seawater. If you didn't know that, never drink seawater. It seems like, oh, it's just salty water. No. And so the things down here are even more dangerous for us. We sometimes will eat things that are kind of acidic, but we don't do this stuff. The only thing that's even close... No. Nope. Milk is still on the other side of seven. So... Stream water, I guess, is the only thing that's listed that's higher than a 7. All right, so again, that takes a pH scale of things that are super basic to super acidic. And that's a log scale. All of those are logs in your real life. Okay, here I would just have to subtract 2 from both sides. I'd divide by 2. I'd square root. What were we doing on the last one? Logs. And actually, what you can do when you learn it eventually is you'll learn you can put a log on both sides. And I'll teach you what that means later. Just like you square root both sides, you can log both sides. But you don't know how to do that yet. Right now, you'd know how to rewrite this as log base 2, what, of 7. Very good. And look, I got x alone. That was the point. When you solve for x, you want x alone, right? So then, these are the kind where we're reminding you that we would rewrite these as both having a 3 to a power, and this one would be 3 to the negative 1. And then once the bases are the same, good things happen. Those two multiplied equal that one, if the bases are the same. So why is this so important? Because sometimes the bases are the same in a log when they're like this. And look, I can make the bases the same. They can both have a base of 3. And this 9 could become 3 squared. And then it, the bases are the same. The answer is already there. Okay. So how would I take this and write it as a log? The most important thing. Like literally, all the other things that I've said don't mean as much as this next thing. Because this is the thing you got to do on your test over and over. If you get stuck in the middle of one of these problems, I'm going to say try rewriting it as, I'm going to say the other way. Because see, this one, this one isn't a log yet. And sometimes we've rewritten it as a log, which is log base what of what? There, I rewrote it as a log. Other times, they're going to give you this, and you need to rewrite it as that. So going back and forth between exponents and logs is the most important thing. 
So would you please rewrite this one in its log form? Log base what? Four of what? Equals x. Cool. That's called log form because it's got a log in it. This is called exponential form because you wrote it as an exponent problem. All right. So this has been rewritten as this. And I know this is true. 3 squared is 9 for sure. So that must also be true. And how would I have done it? I would have made that 3 or that 9 into a 3 squared, and that would have let me see the bases were the same, and then the answer is 2. By making that into a 3 squared, it tells me, ah, oh, these are the same. That's the answer. All right. So if I had this question, what can I do to it? First, I can rewrite it as a log. Second, some of you have a short-term memory. How did I put that in the calculator again? Log 7 divided by log 2. All right. And so this complicated looking equation is just saying that you put the A part in first. The top one, I think of it as the one on the top because, you know, you need one for the top and one for the bottom. This number is more raised up. That number is more down low. All right. And this is where we remind you that that's called the base. This is called the argument. And this is called the exponent. And the way you say it, log base b of x equals y. That's how you'd say that. Okay. So which is the base? Which is the argument? Super easy. The argument is 2. What's the base? <laughs> Very good. What's the argument? And the base is? There you go. What's the argument here? What's the base? All right, good enough. Okay, moving on. Can you go back and forth between these two? That's the most important thing. Prove that you can. Here's one that's a log. Write it the other way as an exponent. Here's one that's an exponent. Write it the other way as a log. I'm going to pause for a second while you try to answer those two. Yeah. Say it one more time. 2 to the 5th equals x. Notice he did not go in order. He jumped back and forth. That is correct. And this other one? CB. Tell me how to write this as a log. Base 4. And they never go in order. There you go. And you even said it right. Log base 12, or 4 of 12 equals x. Very nice. Now, I can't do this one in my head. Even I, the math teacher, can't do that one in my head. Because why? Because I can't make 12 into 4 to the something. You know what I mean? If I could make that 12 into 4 to the something, I'd be able to do it in my head. But otherwise, I can only estimate. Would you agree that 4 to the 1 would be too small to be 12? And 4 to the 2 would be too big to be 12? Because that would be 16. And so it must be something between 1 and 2. I can tell you the answer is 1 point something. You get what I'm saying? That's the best you can do on that kind is to kind of get close. All right. This page is a quick reminder that if you can make these bases the same, that 81 can be written as a 3 to a power, then you can get the answer. There's two really twisty ones in here. This one and this one. I want to give you a second. Some of them are easy. Like this one's just 3 to the 4th. In case you had trouble with that one, I get 3 to the third is 27. Most people know that, but you got times it by 3 one more time and you get 81. Okay. So some of these are easy to do. Like that's easy to make into 5 to a power. You should be able to do that. This is easy to make into 7 to a power. But the two that I circled here, those two are challenging. Give it a shot, and I will totally understand if you're not sure about those two that I circled. Pause while you try that. All right. 
If you haven't already, this is the part where I'd like you to compare on the relatively easy ones and see what you think the answer is. Compare with the person across from you. You don't have to slide desks, just like check and see. Here we go. So, you figured out that this one was 3 to the 4th, and therefore, what's the answer? If the base is the same, the answer is the exponent. So the answer should have been 4. Raise your hand if you had a 4 there. Okay, good. The next one. This should have been written as 5 to the, well, i got to square it to make it 25, but then i got to flip it. Negative squaring would do the trick. Final answer is negative 2. Raise your hand if you had the answer of negative 2. If you didn't actually write the answers, you just changed that, well, then you changed the problem, but you haven't got the answer, which is negative 2. Everything else goes away, and the answer is just negative 2. Okay, this next one. What could you replace the 1 with? An 8 to the 0 is correct. 8 to the 0. So that way, the bases are the same. The answer is 0. On to the next one. This could be a 7 to the 1 half power, in case you forgot what square root means. 7 to the 1 half. So this is now log base 7 of 7 to the 1 half. Same? Answer is a half. Not just the exponent. The whole thing could be replaced with a 1 half. Like if you type this in the calculator, the answer would say one half. All right, then this. Wait, I guess I do one more. This one, 10 to the what? 10 to the fourth. That's the most common mistake. It's on the ACT, happens all the time. ACT gets people with this one. You know, I can prove it. I like to think of it this way. One times 10 to the fourth. That didn't really change it, did it? but it makes it in a way that you're used to, which is called scientific notation. And it reminds you, you take the decimal from the one, you move it over four spots. It's that. And therefore the answer is four, not three. Okay, and then the last one, this one. You can't do it. You can't do it. Let me prove it. I'm going to say that I, whatever this is, the answer is x. I'm going to call it x. You can do that. Now I'm going to solve for x. I'm going to go 2 to the x is negative 4. What power can you put a 2 to that would make it negative? Nothing. There's no way to do it. It's impossible. Therefore, there's no solution. All right, one, I'll go you one better. If this is ever negative or that's ever negative, then it's no solution. You can't have a base or argument that are negative. And I just showed you why. Because it would make you do an impossible thing. There's no solution if the base or the argument are negative. All right. So here's our final like quiz. Did you get what you're supposed to get? Which one is the argument? A, B, C, or D? The answer is C because S is the argument. Complete the following sentence or statement. A logarithm is... Well, I never really talked about this too much, but I'm going to show you. Remember how we took like 2 to the x and we said, or equals 8, and then we said log base 2 of 8 equals x. You remember that's the base? I remember that that part's the argument. That's the base. That's the argument. What's that part called again? So the log equals the exponent. Do you get what I mean? This is the log. And this was the exponent, wasn't it? So a log equals the exponent of an exponential. All right, so exponent. Next, convert that into exponential form. So that means the rewrite. The thing I said was the most important thing. I don't want logs in it anymore. I want it to be an exponent thing. So what's the base? Five. Do you get that means I can rule out that one and that one? Okay, then I'm down to two things. It's either 5 to the question mark equals 8 or 5 to the 8th. Do you remember me saying these do not go in order? So which one can I rule out since they don't go in order? B, and therefore the answer is A. Okay, last thing. This 16 can be written as a 1 fourth if you think about it. 1 fourth to the what? Negative 2. Very good. So there's your answer. 
Okay, now let's pull up the worksheet together and we'll start that homework together. Pause. Okay, there's just more problems than we really need here. And so, do you see where it starts to get to be A, B, C, D? Once that happens, you're going to skip this whole column there. And there's a couple, I think, that went off my screen. So you can skip the two that are underneath it, too. Know what I mean? Let's go skip those whole two columns all the way down. That'll cut it down to a reasonable size. Now, am I saying you can't do those problems? Nope. You can do them. You just don't have to. And therefore, you should do them if you know you need to practice. If you kind of are not that great at this and you want some practice problems, there's a couple of good ones right there. All right. And that's, again... I think there's, yeah, there's two more down there. You can skip K and L also. And that makes it reasonably sized. And that's all I got for you for today.